Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the world's largest alternate build. This is Castello Fortificado and it uses 6,038 pieces. Those pieces all came from the world's largest Lego set, which is the Roman Colosseum. Essentially you buy one of those, part the pieces out, Get the instructions from Rebrickable.com that were created by Boone Builds. And then you can build this magnificent set. All said and done, you're going to have about 3,000 extra pieces left over that you can resell, use for a different mock, use for city details, etc. And let me tell you, it's worth it. This thing kept me guessing. It kept me interested. I would find myself building for up to 7 hours throughout the day. And I could not do that with the Roman Colosseum. It looks brilliant. It's going to pair up beautifully with other sets here in the Lego room on the shelves. Things like the Hogwarts Castle or even the Colosseum when you rebuild our second one. It's incredible. I did take some clips as we built this thing. So I have some uh, clips of it in different uh, phases of construction. We'll have a look at those and then I'll show you some more details of this thing because actually there's more than what meets the eye here. It is simply incredible and Boone did a fantastic job on the world's largest alternate build. I wanted to show you the base before we start adding the structures to the top of it and the first thing we did was actually build these little mini towers right here. No time lapse for this here but we will build the whole entire thing and then complete our review on it uh, later on in this video. Let's continue building. So now we've tiled our base here and it's looking fantastic. And we're gonna start going vertical and building some castle walls. We've started building the main core of our castle here. Check out some of the brickwork and archwork. Done around the central core, which consists of the 16 by 16 Technic plates. Now we've made the exterior walls for the castle, which is in an octagonal shape. Really nice angles there. Gorgeous design. And we're ready to continue progressing with the build. Yesterday we finished building the octagonal outside walls. I'd imagine they're going to get taller than this. Also we have uh, some trusses now that are connecting from the outside walls to the inner keep. And we're going to build up from there. Essentially, we completed three of those trusses that went from the outside walls to the top of the keep. And those actually served as platforms for our towers around the outside of the castle. Those walkways were also created from those trusses. And they have guardrails. Neat little builds there, hey? Looks awesome. And those lead to the interior room right here, which is actually our throne room. This is a cool detail that I didn't know about until building it. You can see it's got some interior pillars there topped by some arch pieces and also a little mini throne right there. Nicely tiled floor and also you'll see that the throne is elevated off the ground by about one plate as well. That's super cool. That's above and beyond right there. I, I love how there's a throne room in this micro scale castle. You also see that there's some jumper tiles right here. That's because it's modular. The top will actually come off so that you can access the throne room and see those details. And the top is just right here. This is the front of it. So essentially you'll pick this up and place it on just like that there and then you have your complete castle i will note that uh, i am missing a few pieces when i sorted this i sorted until two in the morning as you can imagine there's a lot of pieces that need to be sorted especially after the way i parted out my coliseum an interesting way to part it out and then i had to sort them all and i sorted some things into the wrong bins i think so there's just a few missing pieces for example a tile here, some modified tiles here, etc. So you will see that throughout this review, but I do plan on finding those once I sort all of the remaining pieces, over 3,000 of them, 
into my new part bins. And once I sort them, I guarantee I'll be able to find them. And if I can't find them, well, I guess I'm going to have to order a half dozen pieces of BrickLink. It is what it is. Not a big deal. Yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. Let me uh, fix that top back on top of the throne room there. And then I'll give you some of my feedback and uh, share some of my, my thoughts with, of this magnificent build with you guys right now. Actually, before we do that, let's have a look at this top here. So this is the modular top that covers up our throne room. We've got our roofs here created using a couple different shades of tan elements and those uh, slopes. All sorts of window elements all throughout. And this is actually the castle grounds. You'll see there is some tile work done on the inside there. And we use those uh, cone elements to create some bushes and greenery. Now the interesting thing about this castle is it uses only the pieces from the Colosseum. So you'll see that he was actually restricted uh, by that. And for example, some of the interior castle walls, rather than using a one by six or sorry, a one by two or a one by four or one by six, etc., he's using uh, like one by twos, multiple of them. So I found that pretty cool uh, that he actually was constricted by the set, but he found a way around it and made it work. It was, it's really cool. You'll see that all throughout uh, this castle as we review it. There is one difference in mine as well. Uh, see how this is a tan plate down here? For the castle grounds, that's supposed to be this olive color, just like we saw those large Technic plates. So this is supposed to be one of those large Technic plates, but I actually had to fabricate my own as one of mine got damaged. If you know, you know. So I fabricated my own large Technic plate, but it still really works. Um, but that bottom is supposed to be olive color, not like this green color, not, uh, not tan. But I think the substitute that I made worked pretty good. So we've got our smaller towers here, and these smaller towers, the tops of them, somewhat match these towers over here with the flag elements on them. Really cool the way we made those little brick belt flags. Interesting. And there's all sorts of nice textures on the outside with tile work and roller skates and the ingot pieces and much more. This castle is spectacular. It has all sorts of different details, such as the battlements, towers that are just covered with different arrow loops everywhere <laughs> it's an incredible build let's start at the bottom here so we've got our walkway up to the front door the front door actually does open so you can swing those open just like that there you have different circular elements here on either side of the walkway going to the front door and just the texture on the outside with the different window frames, arches, roller skates, masonry bricks, really come together to create an amazing castle. We've got some battlements on the front here, and that matches all around the castle on our octagonal shaped walls. Those trusses from the exterior walls go on top of the keep. And you'll even notice the height difference between here for different pathways and whatnot. Some nice texture with the uh, one by one circular studs and also cone pieces. And what I really like about the towers is they're all different heights. And they're just covered in arrow loops. So we have a small tower here, medium tower there, and then the tallest in the back. And we have some skinny ones here that are like pillars and a large one in the center. It's just stacked with detail. It's amazing. And that's right from the base all the way up to the top. And just everywhere you look, there's just more archways and arrow loops absolutely everywhere. It's just stacked with detail. It's actually insane. It's it's brilliant. I'm, I'm so happy that the destruction of the Colosseum, I know we don't like to talk about it, but I'm so happy that the destruction of that set led to this because this is just incredible. I had a, a heck of a time building it. And the more you look at this thing, the more detail you see and just the more micro scale uh, 
accessibility and compatibility, I guess you see, because there's just archways and walkways and stuff absolutely everywhere. And just the amount of exterior detail in Grieveling is, is really neat. And I think my favorite part about it is how it's modular and how that's, that central uh, area here comes off and then you can see into the throne room. I think that was just a really neat touch and just went above and beyond what actually had to be done for this magnificent set. I mean, it sort of speaks for itself. I'm not really a castle person, so I do apologize that I don't know all of the terminology of castles. But I know that he took inspiration from uh, famous castles from all around the world and sort of combined them all together into one giant uh, re-mock of the uh, Colosseum. So great work, Boone. It looks fantastic. Thank you so much for providing these instructions on rebrickable.com. And thank you, Lego, I guess, for providing the pieces in the Colosseum set. And now i got to figure out what I'm going to do with the 3,000 extra pieces. Luckily for me, I have a beach. And this is a lot of tan. So we'll be able to do something pretty cool with it. Guys, remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. I'll also link the instructions in the pinned comment and also description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.